Hi everyone, I'm Milan and did you know there's a better way to configure NED Framework Core? Let me show you. We're going to start out with a simple application that I have here on the screen. You can see that we are configuring NED Framework in the typical fashion. We're calling addDB context, specifying our database context, and then we're pulling the connection string from the configuration and in this case we're using SQL Server. Below that, you can see I added one minimal API endpoint. This is a simple endpoint for getting the company by the ID that is specified in the route. We aren't doing anything fancy in the code, we're just fetching the company from the database using as no tracking because we don't want the database context to be tracking our entity because we are only reading it for displaying it from the API. We can save some performance using this approach. If the company is null, we are returning a 404 not found result. Otherwise, if we did find the company, we're going to map it to a very simple TTO. We create a new company response and return that from the endpoint with 200 OK status. Let's see now if everything is working correctly. We'll move over to Postman and call our endpoint. And as you can see, we are getting back our company with the ID of 1. Now let's try passing in some ID that we know doesn't exist in the database. And we are expecting a 404 not found. And as you can see, we get the proper response. It says the company with ID 11 in this case was not found. Now I want to head back over to the NED framework configuration. And I want to change a couple of things. First, I'm going to enable detailed errors, just as an example. And I'm also going to turn on sensitive data logging. Now, be careful with this option because you only really want it set to true in some development environment or when working locally. You don't want to do this in production because you might end up leaking sensitive information in the logs. I'm also going to expand the SQL Server configuration. We can pass in a Lambda expression as a second argument. And here I'm going to turn on retry on failure. We can set that to something simple like free. And I'm also going to change the command timeout to be 30 seconds. Okay, this is looking good. We added retry on failure and command timeout configuration for SQL Server. And we also turned on detailed errors and sensitive data logging for our database context. One small issue with this approach is that most of the values are hard-coded when we are configuring the database context. In this case, we're only pulling the connection string from configuration, so that one we can change, but the retry on failure, the command timeout, and the other two options are hard-coded, so we can't change them with, without deploying a new version of our application. You might be asking yourself, is there a better way to do this? And yes, there is, and I'm going to show you a better way now. First, let's go over to our application settings JSON file. I'm going to add a new configuration section. I will call it database options. And I'm going to add values for all of the properties that we want to configure. So I'll set max retry count to three, command timeout to 30, enable detailed errors. I'm going to set it to false in this case because I don't want it for some reason and I'm going to set Enable Sensitive Data Logging to True because I'm running in a development environment and I want to see more detailed logs from NED Framework. Now we could go ahead and use the naive approach and read all of these values directly from configuration using Builder Configuration. But that's a little cumbersome, you have to parse the values and so on and we don't want to deal with that. So I will show you a better way to do it using the Options pattern. I'm going to create an options folder and I'll add a new class inside of it. I will call it database options and I will use it to store all of the options that I want to be pulling from configuration. I want to add the connection string as a property and I will pass it in an empty string as a default value. I will add max retry count. I'm also going to add the command timeout and I will add the two Boolean properties, enable detailed errors and enable sensitive data logging. 
Notice that the names of the properties in database options have to match the values in app settings JSON, otherwise this approach will not work. Now that we have our options class containing all of the configuration values, we have to somehow set it up and connect it to the actual configuration JSON file. So for that, I'm going to create another class. I will call it database options setup. And this class will inherit from the iConfigure options interface that is coming from Microsoft.extensions.options namespace. And I'm going to pass in database options as the generic argument. iConfigure options is resolved at runtime inside of ASP.NET Core, which means we have access to dependency injection inside of this class, which is exactly what we are going to use to map the configuration values to our database options class. So I'm going to go ahead and inject the iConfiguration interface. And the first thing that I want to do is fetch the connection string in the same way that we were doing it before. So I'm going to say configuration dot get connection string and pass in the connection string name. In this case, it's going to be database. And now that I have the connection string in memory, I can set the value to the database options instance. The next thing that I want to do is map the rest of the options directly from the configuration section in app settings.json. So I'm going to create a private constant string that will contain the name of the configuration section. And now all I have to do is say configuration.getSection, pass in the configuration section name and call bind, which will bind the entire section to an object instance that I specify. And, and in this case, I'm going to pass in our database options instance. So this is all of the configuration that we need to set up mapping from our app settings JSON into our database options class. One more thing that you have to consider is that our database options will be resolved only once, the first time that it's injected somewhere, which means we can't change the values at runtime by changing the configuration in our application settings. So to apply any new changes to the database options, all we have to do is update the application settings and restart the application. The benefit here is that we don't have to do another deployment to apply any of the hard-coded values. One more thing we have to do is to tell our application how to resolve our database options. So to do that, we call builder.services.configureOptions and we pass in the class that implements iConfigureOptions. In this case, that is database options setup. And now we have to use our database options to configure any framework somehow. There's another overload to the add DB context method. And this one accepts a delegate with a service provider and the DB context options builder that we already had before. And now we can use our service provider to resolve the database options just like any other service in our application. So we call service provider get service and we have to resolve I options of database options. That's important. And now I can use the values coming from the database options class to configure everything. So I'm going to change the connection string, the maximum retry count, the command timeout, and I'm also going to pass in the two Boolean values for enable detailed errors and enable sensitive data logging. Let's see if everything is still working correctly. I'm going to place a breakpoint at the start of our addDB context configuration expression. And I'm also going to place a breakpoint in our database options setup configure method. And now let's see how this is all working together. I'm going to start the application and call our endpoint from Postman, just as we did before. This is going to hit our endpoint, which will cause the database context to be resolved from dependency injection. Now we hit our breakpoint inside of at DB context and we move to the line where we resolve the database options. Now, if we try to step over it, we hit the second breakpoint inside of database options setup. Here we are resolving the connection string. Notice that it's read from the configuration properly. If you take a look at the options instance, after we go over the call to bind, you can see that all of the values are properly mapped from our application settings. So we can see the max retry count is free, the command timeout is 30, and now we can proceed to apply these values to the database context configuration. And now that we're back in Postman, you can see that everything is still working as before, even with the new approach for configuring the database context. This is the approach that I like to use when configuring any framework. 
I find that the options pattern gives me a lot of flexibility, which is something that I always strive for when designing my applications. If you found what I showed you in this video useful, give it a like. Make sure you subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss any of my future videos. And until next time, stay awesome.